let us start with thank you santan gopal for this opportunity you wrote to me almost a year back about this instruction course and uh, so always i think we start with uh, anatomy you know that uh, there are six muscles in each eye and uh, superior rectus the main action is elevation at the secondary main uh, torsion and uh, also adduction inferior rectus depression extorsion and uh, adduction superior oblique intorsion is the primary and the depression and abduction inferior oblique extorsion elevation and abduction medial rectus only adduction and lateral rectus only abduction concept of the contact i think uh, in the eye globe the arc of contact is the distance between the tangential point and the center of the muscle insertion medial rectus is only 6 mm and lateral rectus it is 15 mm inferior rectus 9 mm and uh, superior rectus 8.4 power of the muscle proportionate to the arc of contact hence the resection it res the recession weakens the power power of the muscle the other uh, weakening force is the uh, the fadens operation or posterior fixation so what is the goals of the strabismus surgery we need to restore the binocular vision and uh, to improve the ocular alignment and also to enlarge the field of single binocular vision especially in paralytic squints and to alleviate an abnormal head posture to improve the aesthetic appearance in fact this should be, uh, become the primary cause the way the slide has been shown as an adult so these are actually just before the marriage what uh, in santana gopal's humor way honeymoon squints so before the surgery they will come for uh, aesthetic appearance in order to bring down the dowry or whatever you say the prioritized uh, goals based on the causes of strabismus so normally i think all of you know that uh, we do the cover test distance and near then uh, with glasses and without the glasses then uh, you check the versions you check the ductions and then if required uh, force duction then uh, were orthoptic evaluation including the near point of accommodation and near point of convergence and also stereopsis as a routine stereopsis is uh, good especially in assessing in intermittent exotropias and esotropias and uh, of course whether any abnormal head posture is there uh, face turn is there or uh, head tilt or chin up or down chin up or down representing the vertical muscle then uh, cyclo torsional the superior oblique and inferior obliques and uh, side face turn is to for the lateral rectus and medial rectus then the optimal time for the squint surgery depends on the type of squint the age of the patient and uh, various sensory and motor adaptation one important thing i forgot is also to check the fixation refractive error and uh, suppose the patient is amblyopia always we first treat the amblyopia so in concomitant squints it presents after wearing the glasses hyperopic and accommodative and uh, myops in exotropic and alternating well with the equal vision and uh, operate as early as possible and when the eyes are within the acceptable range of alignment binocular vision may help there is a little controversy when to operate in infantile esotropia i think uh, usually i think before one year of age is always uh, preferred to give them some amount of uh, stereopsis in intermittent squints is uh, observed and uh, refracted every 6 months and uh, orthoptic given is uh, orthoptic treatment is given in the way of fusional exercises uh, vision therapy having some uh, accommodative uh, improvement and also to see whether uh, high aco ra ratio is there in order to get uh, good results whether to choose 
you know that intermittent squints in divergent squints you have divergence excess basic type and also convergence insufficiency and also pseudo divergence excess the last option always is uh, surgery in uh, small angle intermittent squints the older children guidelines are initially try all optical and orthoptic measures in order to correct the sensory adaptation sometimes even with uh, prisms or cranial prisms we do correct small angle squints and in the presence of normal retinal correspondence early surgery gives always good outcomes uh, giving them a crude binocular vision and uh, absence of true fusion surgery for cosmetic reason the fusion may develop as i told you earlier extra macular fusion also can develop so children 12 years and older i am finding a pediatric budding ophthalmologist coming to the auditorium welcome <laughs> children 12 years and older surgery can be decided at leisure and uh, since it is mainly for only for uh, cosmetic reasons pre operative assessment rule out all neurological diseases the previous photographs are very important because sometimes they may have a face turn which they may, you may not elicit in the uh, clinic and uh, very important is sometimes they undergo surgery also elsewhere and then they don't tell that they have undergone surgery so it's important also to see on the slit lamp whether any scar is there on the conjunctiva time of the onset of strabismus and uh, the past anesthetic complications bleeding diathesis hyperthermia etc and uh, also those days colin apnea was there and uh, we just find out even the cast of the patient certain uh, group in south india have uh, scolin apnea following general anesthesia and previous uh, records of the surgery previous occlusion treatment ambulatory treatment all these are very essential so in the examination sometimes you do have all concomitant squints will have uh, nystagmus and uh, as i told you there can be an uh, anomalous head posture and uh, lid abnormalities like uh, the prominent epicanthus and uh, ptosis in fact 30% of the strabismus reported in childhood is uh, pseudo strabismus because of prominent uh, epicanthal folds then you see the visual acuity various methods logma charts so many charts are there with for the third year fourth year group preverbal then you have the allen cards then you have uh, the plt preferential looking test etc then anterior segment as i told you to check whether any previous surgery has been done and to check the posterior segment very important because one is also i think if there is an infantile esotropia you find uh, if there is an extortion of the inferior if you find the extortion of the macula then you know that inferior obliques are overacting and you look for the inferior oblique overaction because an infant of 1 year may not cooperate for you to do all the versions and ductions and uh, other pathology suppose a retinoblastoma is there i think they will have an esotropia and uh, all children less than 6 12 years sensory esotropias are more common than sensory exotropias which happens after 12 years of age because of the high accommodation and uh, tonic convergence identify very important is whether any eccentric fixation most of us don't do the fixation pattern but uh, always especially when you suspect a little bit of amblyopia and uh, anisometropia and uh, visible squint better to check the fixation and uh, to, as i mentioned already test for duction version force duction and force generation if possible otherwise on the table orbital imaging if required i think uh, it's very difficult to do imaging in children and uh, so unless it's very much contemplated don't uh, subject them to imaging general considerations amblyopia surgery should be delayed till all possible treatment of amblyopia is done including occlusion vision therapy penalization and uh, vertical incompetence while planning surgery for horizontal strabismus associated a and b phenomena 
horizontal incompetence in case of unequal deviations in the right and left case and the previous surgery uh, prefer uh, unoperated muscle and uh, because operated muscles there will be a lot of additions and in the presence of restriction a post action positive surge on the operated muscle works better and the uh, distance and near measurements like as I mentioned to you high AC over air ratio and uh, with the accommodative squints you can um, also give uh, bifocals or the phosphorine iodide and uh, if there is uh, basic type and uh, other things to go for surgery and uh, force duction test and uh, it's very important and if in fact all the cases Professor Prem Prakash used to do and succinyl choline ca can cause uh, ca contraction of the extracting. So use the non depolarizing agent. Nowadays they practically don't use uh, succinyl chlorine. I think uh, I would prefer uh, if I am gifted to do surgeries under topical anesthesia like uh, Santana Gopal. I have done only a couple of cases and of course with difficulty. I, I wish I am already 65. I don't know whether it will happen. Guidelines for uh, surgery is the surgeon factor and the angle of squint, age of the patient, effect of recession section, intractable embryopias, effect of medial rectus or lateral rectus, effect of vertical versus horizontal uh, recessions and combined recession resection or and or or the individual muscles. And if it is uh, less than 50 prisms, we do one eye R and R and if it is more than 50 prisms to choose the other eye and to go for the third muscle, more than 75 prisms to do all the four muscles. Anatomic considerations, distance of the rectus muscle, all of you know basic anatomy and uh, splay muscle insertion and avoid the central sag which can cause a lesser as a recession effect and uh, transpositions all always follow the spiral of uh, chillax and avoid operating on the three recti at a time including the lateral rectus to prevent uh, anterior segment ischemia as lateral rectus is supplied by just a single anterior ciliary vessel. Double check the eye and the muscle to be operated. Double check the orthoptic evaluation. Double check uh, the refraction <coughs> and uh, everything before uh, surgery and uh, after orthoptics uh, does the workup, you again check it up and again before surgery you check it up. And there's no, uh, nothing wrong in uh, changing the plan uh, right on the last minute. And the uh, sclera is the thinnest at the site of the muscle insertion and uh, leave uh, 0 0.5 millimeters of the stump while suturing. Avoid the breach of the posterior tenons when doing supramaximal recessions and establish symmetry between the two eyes when it does not exist. In patients with high grade stereopsis always keep diplopia in mind especially many times I think uh, over correcting the intermittent exotropia causes intractable diplopia and uh, if there is a high AC over air ratio which was missed and then you to go and plan for a bilateral lateral rectal cessation and many times associated with inferior oblique weakening procedures, you may land up with uh, 15 prisms, 20 prisms, isotropia, where there is not only intractable diplopia, cosmetically the parents are very apprehensive. So I believe in little under correction or to aim for orthotropia rather than over correction as mentioned in the books. Types of incisions, the Pox, Marsh, uh, Fornix incisions and the Limbal incisions, one nodal. This is the phonic incision. And the advantage here is that, uh, especially for obliques, I think it's very convenient to do the phonic incisions. And uh, re surgery also is much easier. And uh, cosmetically, you don't uh, find a scar with the phonic incision. It's almost 8 centimeters away from the limbus. And one nodal classical incision, it has its own advantages and disadvantages. These calculations, I think, don't matter for each uh, individual. For Santana Gopal, it may be different. For Surendran, it may be different. And for you, it may be different. So roughly, I think, one millimeter of recession of the medial rectus corrects about five to six prisms. One millimeter of lateral rectus recession or section corrects about three to four 
which is my calculation. I think uh, it uh, depends. The textbooks do mention. In fact, there are also now uh, apps available. Just uh, put it there, 50 prisms of XO. It will give you how much to do, whether you are planning for both eyes or a single eye. And uh, adjustable suture techniques uh, are mainly, I think, uh, I do it uh, very occasionally, like a restrictive strabismus following detachment surgery or previous trauma, unpredictable syndromes, and uh, any long-standing complex strabismus. And those who can cooperate, a single stage adjustable can be done on the table, like uh, what Santana Gopal is doing, he can as well check because it's topical. Check the alignment on the table itself and you can adjust a little bit, not doing the adjustable suture. And adjustable suture next day also causes uh, OCR, which he was mentioning. And uh, at least you will be in the theater to do the topical anesthesia, whereas adjustable in the OPD uh, for an adult, you may land up with uh, OCR where the drugs may not be available to resuscitate the patient. Considerations of diplopia determine uniocular or binocular, determine the time of onset, progression, improvement, and uh, many times uh, for a week uh, there will be invariably diplopia. I have not seen more than 2% of the patients having uh, persistent diplopia lifelong, even uh, uh, with the presence of stereopsis. And uh, overcorrections also settle down within a week or two weeks. Prism trial can be done. I always keep uh, some glasses with uh, prisms base in and base out. And in case if there is a overcorrection following uh, divergent squint surgery, three prisms base out, I will just uh, keep it and then put them temporarily with a plano glass. And uh, it will be for the children's size. Or you can put a frenal prism and uh, or uh, do the patching for some time and before uh, considering second surgery. Use of uh, Botox, I uh, think uh, initially in the early 80s, I was try 90s, I was trying, but uh, now uh, very rare indications, I think the best thing is in the paralytic squint of uh, lateral rectus palsy, wherein I think my calculation is secondary deviation. Suppose it's 50 prisms, I give five units of Botox. 40 prisms, four units. Though Alan Scott has a different protocol and uh, Complications, uh, no, nothing uh, goes without complication. So intraoperative, uh, wrong eye and wrong muscle, because especially if there's a high volume, this is a possibility. In fact, Marshall Fox himself quotes about one in thousand wrong uh, eye, wrong patient, wrong, not wrong eye, wrong patient. Actually, especially, I think uh, twins, I think they, there was a mix up when I was there. And, uh, Hemorrhage can happen, scleral perforation. Last week, in fact, I had a patient with a thrombocytopenia, though platelets were given and uh, I did have a lot of uh, blood oozing and uh, hematoma. And uh, so you'll have to rule out uh, bleeding diseases, especially uh, in males, male patients. Scleral perforation, very rare. So I take the bite, uh, seeing the suture, 6 vicral seeing the suture and uh, I don't go very deep like uh, retinal surgeons. Central sag uh, could be avoided by putting the third suture in the middle, which uh, few surgeons are trying. Fat prolapse and slipped or lost muscle. And post-operative, very rare complication is the orbital cellulitis, dreaded complication. And uh, suture granuloma, small conjunctival cyst, dull formation. Over and under corrections, that actually is unpredictable because one millimeter of shifting in one child may be different with another child. And the same family also, it may be different. So always when you are uh, talking to the parents, you tell that be prepared for second surgery. When you're doing second surgery, be prepared for third surgery. When you're doing third surgery, be prepared for fourth surgery. I've done even five times a uh, couple of occasions, uh, five times. Anterior segment ischemia is a very rare complication. And uh, I think uh, I've done my best for the time allotted by Gopal.